So what makes more power on a Whipple supercharged 4.8 liter? A factory LS9 cam, an aftermarket blower cam, or an aftermarket NA cam? Let's find out. In this video, we ran three different camshafts on a Whipple supercharged 4.8 liter. The first two were dedicated positive displacement supercharger cams, a factory LS9 and an LJMS blower cam. Now the third and final cam we ran was actually an NA cam with specs similar to the LJMS cam. So this test answered two questions. The first is, how much more power does the LJMS cam make than the factory LS9? The second question is, if we've got a supercharged 4.8, what happens if we run an NA cam? To run our cam test, we needed a test motor. So we chose a 4.8 liter LR4. Now our test motor featured a factory block, factory crank, Gen 4 rods, and forged JE pistons. The JE pistons featured 7cc domes and valve release, which offered a little bit more compression and plenty of room for piston to valve clearance. Topping our little 4.8 liter with MLS head gaskets and ARP headsets was a set of TrickFlow 205 heads. In reality, those TrickFlow heads were probably overkill on our little 4.8 liter. I mean, those CNC ported heads might support as much as 600 horsepower, which is way more than our little 4.8 was gonna make. Additional components on our little 4.8 liter included a set of 83 pound Holley injectors, a set of inch and three quarter long tube headers, and a Holley HP management system to dial everything in. Now the crowning glory was of course the polished Whipple supercharger. Whipple supplied a 2.9 liter twin screw. To get this thing to make boost, we installed a seven and a half inch crank pulley and a four inch blower pulley. We also installed an adapter that allowed us to run 102 millimeter throttle body. And the last thing we wanted to do was restrict the airflow into the supercharger. With everything ready, let's check out those cam specs. The trio of cams used for our supercharged cam comparison included a factory LS9, a dedicated blower cam from LJMS, and a naturally aspirated cam we happen to have laying around. Now the LS9 cam featured a 558-552 lift split, a 211-230 degree duration split, and a wide 122.5 degree lobe separation angle. If you notice, these positive displacement blower cams tend to have a wide LSA, and the LJMS cam was no different. It did have a little more aggressive specs, including a 610-596 lift split, a 223-238 degree duration split, and a 120 degree lobe separation angle. Now, our naturally aspirated cam came from Crane Cams. That featured 590 lift, both on the intake and the exhaust, a 224-232 degree duration split, and a 115 degree lobe separation angle. Now, we've used that NA cam a lot, and it's always worked well, but we were curious. Would it work with a blower? To get things started, we installed the factory LS9 cam in our supercharged 4.8 liter. It's important to note that all three cams were run with the same air fuel, the same timing, and the same pulley ratio. But I want you to let me know in the comments, should we adjust the pulley so that the boost is the same, or should we keep the pulley the same and find out what happens to the boost? For this test, I picked keeping the pulleys the same to find out what effect the cams had on the boost level and power. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the horsepower curves generated by our three cams, the LS9, the LJMS blower cam, and our Crane NA cam. If we take a look at the results of our Whipple supercharged 4.8 liter, we see that when it was equipped with the LS9 cam, that supercharged combination, produced 676 horsepower at 6,700 RPM and 533 foot-pounds of torque at 6,200. As we've come to expect, the torque curve was nice and flat. We got a rising boost curve. You see it's still climbing at our shutoff point of 6,700. So we could have rev this thing higher and it would have definitely made more power. Now let's take a look at and see what happens when we added the LJMS blower cam. So you can see the LJMS blower cam definitely added power over the LS9 cam. Equipped with the LJMS blower cam, the supercharged 4.8 produced 688 horsepower at 6,700 and 546 foot-pounds at 6,200. Note that both of those peaks occurred at the same place as the LS9, so it definitely offered a little bit of power from the cam swap. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we applied the NA cam. So 
So this is that crane cam. I'm gonna get rid of the LJMS cam. That way we can see the comparison. So compared to the LS9 cam, the NA cam actually improved the mid-range and low-speed torque quite a bit. And you can see they kind of converge at the top there. The LS9 cam started to do a little bit better. Now, that uh, wider lobe separation was definitely helping out up there. But the NA cam obviously performed pretty well on that supercharged application. It picked up a bunch of torque and um, didn't even fall off that much at the very top. Now let's take a quick comparison between the, let's look at the LJMS versus the NA cam. Get rid of our fuel. So if you take a look at the numbers, the LJMS produced more peak horsepower and more peak torque. It just did it at a higher RPM. But from 3,000 to 5,500, the NA cam actually made a little bit more torque. There's not a ton of diff power difference there. Uh, you'd probably be happy with either one of the cams. But now that we've taken a look at the power, let's take a look at what happened to the boost curve with each of these cams. If we take a look at our boost curves, this is the boost curve supplied by our Supercharged 4.8 equipped with the LS9 cam. We had a peak of 13.9 PSI equipped with that LS9 cam. So now let's take a look and see what happens after we added the LJMS cam. The boost dropped by as much as one full point here in the middle in the 5000 RPM range right in here. Dropped a little bit less at the top, but there's a definite drop in boost, you know, more power lower boost, that's kind of a normal thing, what we come to expect. Here's the interesting thing though, when we added the NA cam, we saw an even bigger drop in boost, uh, another full pound basically. And the interesting thing is that even though it produced the least amount of boost, it didn't produce the most horsepower. Now it did produce the most mid-range torque from you know in the 5,000 and below range, but it certainly didn't produce the highest peak power. So is that a valve event thing that's happening that's dropping the boost? Uh, we saw good power from all these cams. Interesting thing going on with the boost. The other thing I need to bring up really quickly is that there was a discrepancy between the boost I was reading on the dyno. It was perfectly consistent, every run was dead on. And the readings I got from the map sensor when we were doing the tuning. All of the map sensor readings were lower. Again, they were perfectly consistent and repeatable and the dyno runs were perfectly consistent and repeatable. It's just that they differed by about 1.3 pounds, and I honestly think that the reading we were getting out of the map sensor is probably more accurate. That's not a big deal. Let's get to the summary. So what do we learn from running these three cams on our supercharged 4.8 liter? Well, the first thing we learned is that factory LS9 cam is actually pretty good, especially on this smaller displacement 4.8. And that's not surprising. Given the fact that GM spent a ton of money designing that cam, specifically for a positive displacement supercharge application. And not just a supercharge application, but one with more displacement. That's right, that camshaft on a 6.2 is much milder than it is on a 4.8. So the LS9 is basically a wilder camshaft for that little 4.8. And that's why it performs so well. And that's why we didn't see much of a difference in power between the LS9 cam and that LJMS blower cam. Basically, the LJMS blower cam was maybe too big for our 4.8. Now we've run that cam before and it works well. I mean, we've seen gains of 35 horsepower or so on a supercharged 6.2. But on this 4.8, the gains were only about half that. So you'd have to decide. On a 4.8, do you really need the bigger cam? This also explains why our naturally aspirated cam, that 224-232 cam from Crane Cams, works so well. It helped improve the mid-range torque, which this thing was lacking. I mean, a combination of the wide LSA on those blower cams and the short runner on that supercharger intake manifold wasn't really helpful for torque production. But that NA cam definitely improved it. We also saw a big change in the boost curves. You see that LS9 cam actually had the highest boost number. Does that mean there was cheating going on? No, it's just the cam timing. When we installed the LJMS blower cam, the boost actually came down. 
So let me know in the comments, should we have adjusted the boost back up to see a bigger difference in power? Well, that also happened with the NA cam. When we installed that crane cam, boost came down even farther. It had the lowest boost number of any of the three cams. So should we hike that back up to find out what happened? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Make sure to comment. Tune in next time. We got more stuff coming. Thanks for watching.